Good morning, everyone, and welcome again to our Bible study. We are in John chapter 15. Let us begin with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for your word. May your word speak to our hearts and guide us and teach us something very important of whatever you want to speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, starts off with Jesus saying, I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. Now that word husbandman in old old English means the wine dresser. Okay, so like the gardener, the one who prunes um, the branches. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now that's important right there. So think of it this way. So every branch, we are the branches, the believers. We are plugged in to Jesus, who is the vine. So the vine gives the branches all the nutrients and makes it grow. And of course it bears the fruit. So every believer that is not fully plugged into Jesus and they're not bearing fruit, they're just doing their own thing. Uh, the Father, God the Father, will take off the branches because it's not bearing anything. And it's interesting where it says, and those who are plugged into him, um, that bears fruit. He, he um, prunes or purges it. And that's important too because when you have a, a branch that is bearing fruit, you want to prune off certain leaves so that all the nutrients can go to that fruit. And that's what God does. So if you are spending time with God, you're, you're seeking Him, and you're wondering why you're in a desert place or or God's just not opening the doors it just seems like nothing is happening in your life it seems like you're not um, producing fruit but you truly are seeking him you're spending time well that simply means that God is pruning things out of your life that shouldn't be there so that you can bear more fruit for the kingdom like he could be pruning out pride. He could be pruning out um, arrogance. He could be pruning out bad habits. Uh, whatever it is that God needs to prune out of our lives so that we can bear fruit for him. That, that's just what he's doing. Verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. He's speaking that to us, right? His word, as we read his word and get into his word, it washes our spirit. It, it just, our soul, it just washes us clean. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, so we can never go ahead of God. Remember in the last message about going ahead of God or trying to do things in our own strength. It just cannot happen. Except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So, you have an idea, you have a, a desire to do something for God. Take it up in prayer. Give it to him and wait for his timing. Wait for him to open up the doors. Because it's all about him, his strength, and his timing. Verse 6. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Now this is not talking about hell fire, okay? Because once you are part of 
Jesus, once you've accepted him, once you become born again, and he gives you that free gift of, of salvation, I truly believe you can never lose your salvation. I, I, I truly believe it. Because the Bible is so clear that no man, no demon, no angel, no one can snatch you from the Father's hands. But we definitely can grieve the Holy Spirit. We can grieve God and we can muck things up in our own strength. And like the Bible says, the branch is now um, broken off from the vine. We are no longer getting our nutrients from God. And it says here very clearly that men will gather up the branches, men of the world, and they will throw you into the fire. And, uh, and you're going to get burned. How many times has people that have given their life to Christ have just kind of walked away or backslidden? And I'm thinking about the parallel or the parable of the, um, the uh, prodigal son, right? He, he totally, uh, gave up his inheritance and walked away from his father and the family and he got burned. He went in the fire, but God was, or his father was waiting for him, open arms and ready to receive him and, and have a big banquet for a son. So that's the good thing about God is he'll always welcome us back. He'll always be there receiving us back if we have strayed away and have been burned in the fire. All right, verse seven. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. So if we're abiding in Jesus, like I said, you have a desire in your heart, you have a, a, a burden or, or, or something you want to do for God, ask him. It says right here, if we're abiding in him, he will give us whatever we, we ask for. It'll be done. If it, of course, brings glory to God. Herein is my Father's, herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples. And of course, bringing, bearing fruit for God brings glory to God. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. So it's just, uh, that is true love right there. The world's love of standards is fornication, it's perversion, it's opposite, it's not of God. Uh, pure love is the love of God, the love of Jesus, to have communion with God and fellowship with one another in the same spirit. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Let me ask you a question this morning. Do you want to have joy in your life to the fullest? Well, continue to remain in Jesus' love. Remain in the Father's love. Remain in his word. And you'll be full of joy. How many times have you have been agitated or just kind of gloomy and down? And you've realized, you know what? I haven't read my Bible in a few days. And you just pick up the word and you just start reading and it feels like the darkness just kind of blows away. I know I've felt that many times. So let's continue to remain in the word of God. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay, lay down his life for his friends. And that's what Jesus did for us. He laid down his life for us. Just incredible. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. And what's his commands? To love our God with our uh, all our might, all our strength, all of our heart, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. 
henceforth. I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Wow, so incredible. So we are, um, we are no longer servants to God. Jesus considers us his friend. And not only that, our shepherd, one who will guide us. And he's sharing everything that the Father is revealing to him, to us. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So again, as long as we are um, abiding in Jesus, then we have full access to heaven. And God is a very generous God. You know, he will give us the desires of our hearts if it, again, brings glory to him. These things I command you, that ye love one another. So, again, he's saying to love one another. We need to love one another. We're all different. Uh, we're not all the same. We all have different body functions, different gifts, different uh, characteristics. And we need one another. We should never ever compare with one another because we're all made uh, uni uh, uniquely and differently. But we all need one another to function as that perfect body of Christ. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. So don't be surprised when you're sharing the gospel to someone or family members and they gossip about you, they backstab you, uh, they try to hurt you, they try to make up stories. I have it happen to me all the time. And the Bible just says right there that the world hated him first. So don't be surprised. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, Therefore, the world hateth you. So, praise God, we're not part of this world. This world belongs to the prince of the air, which is Satan. It belongs to him. It functions in his kingdom, in his darkness. Now, we once were there, but notice what Jesus says, that he pulled us out of the world. And now we are of the kingdom of heaven. We belong to him. So it's like, again, adding water and vinegar just doesn't mix. This is why certain people just cannot stand Christians. It's because they're part of this world and, we're, and we are not. They're part of the kingdom of darkness. We're part of the kingdom of heaven. Remember the world that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. So, don't be surprised if you get persecuted. Um, they persecuted our Lord first. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. You see, they do not know God. If a person truly wants to know God, it doesn't matter if they're born into a different religion um, if they truly want to know who God is, then God's going to reveal Jesus to him. And that's what he's doing through visions, through dreams, through just speaking to people's hearts. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now that they have no cloak for their sin... Let me uh, redo that one again. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. 
if I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. So Jesus came for them. They did not recognize them. They did not know the Father. And so they hate it. Jesus is saying that they actually hate it both Jesus and his Father. They just want to do their own thing. You see, they're not abiding. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled, that it is written in their law. In their law. Have you noticed that, what he's saying? Because they're under the law. So anyone under the law, he's speaking to the Jewish religious leaders, the Pharisees. Anyone who wants to keep the law and remain in the law, then they are a curse upon themselves. So it says, they hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So the Holy Spirit, he's the one who testifies and speaks to us and guides us and reveals the Father. And ye shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. And that wraps up uh, chapter 15. And uh, we will get into chapter 16, God willing, tomorrow. God bless you, and uh, uh, may God use his word to speak to your hearts. We'll close in prayer. To your Heavenly Father, thank you again for your word, and bless everyone's coming and going, and be with them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Bye for now. Have a good day.